Hi everyone, thanks for listening to my presentations today. I'll be rounding up with part seven of seven when it comes to hypothyroidism. And I'll be addressing the differential diagnosis. If you haven't listened to parts one, two, three, four, five, and six, please kindly do. Okay? Hypothyroidism, differential diagnosis. Let's go. When it comes to hypothyroidism, we may be dealing with a thyroid hypothyroidinemia. And in that case, we'll be having abnormal serum thyroid binding immunoglobulin, therefore leading to increased serum total hormones and increased free T4 with slightly increased or normal T3. The thyroid stimulating hormone will be within the normal range, and the clinical features will be that of eutyroidism. Another differential diagnosis is subclinical hyperthyroidism. In that case, you have decreased thyroid stimulating hormone, normal T4, normal T3. The treatment and diagnosis have been explained if you check all the series, you're going to find them. Another differential is central hypothyroidism, which will give the feature of decreased thyroid stimulating hormone, normal T4, and normal T3. Also, I have detailed explanation, including treatment, when it comes to central hypothyroidism on my channel. You can check that out. T4 toxicosis is not new to my channel. You can check this series, you will find that. In that case, you'll be having increased T4, probably because amiodarone has prevented the conversion of T4 to T3. So T4 has accumulated or decreased T4 conversion to T3 by any other condition, including non-thyroid illness. It's likely we may be dealing with thyroid stimulating hormone-induced hyperthyroidism. And in that case, we're going to ask ourselves some questions. Are we dealing with pituitary adenoma that is secretory? Or we're dealing with partial resistance to the feedback effect of T4 and T3 on thyroid stimulating hormone secretion? So, we do all the elaborate investigations to make sure we are getting it right, including CT scan of the head, if we are now suspicious that this is pituitary adenoma. The differential diagnosis could be limited to the heart alone, like arrhythmia. Of course, you have adenergic symptoms in hypothyroidism, and we are having that now in arrhythmia. With or without congestive cardiac failure features, so you are confused. No, you are not confused. You're right. You are along the right path. All we need to do is to rule that out. Get EKG. Yes. Oh, thorough physical and you no know, examination of cardiovascular system. Get out electrolyte level out. Then you have a cardiac monitor as well. You'll be sure. It could be panic attack, psychiatric disorder, post-traumatic stress disorder, or fear. Just ask it. Now, open heart, open mind, ask the questions around panic attack, PTSD, and fear. Could be metabolic, hypoglycemia, dehydration. Or massive nausea, vomiting, diarrhea, leading to hypovolemic shock. Just open heart. Find out. Part of differential diagnosis could be pregnancy. Why that? Because pregnancy on its own could give a picture suggestive of hypothyroidism by having low level of TSH, but it is physiologic. So we can have physiologic decrease TSH 
and someone will be bothering him or herself, am I dealing with hypothyroidism here? So it's not as a place to rule out pregnancy, calling for umacolonic gonadotrophin in every woman with features of hypothyroidism, but within the childbearing age group. Also, fever is another differential diagnosis. But I need to drop a small note because of that. When we're dealing with elderly, a thermometer might not give us the true picture. Okay, they can be with sepsis, with pneumonia, with urinary tract infection, actually dying of that, yet our thermometer may not give us the picture we expect. So when dealing with elderly, we should put that at the back of our mind. Still on differential diagnosis, we might be dealing with high glucocorticoids, dopamine, epinephrine, beta agonists, and we are now faced with their effects on metabolic activities. And lastly, we might be dealing with a case of levotyrosine used in apothyroidism. Okay? Part of the possible causes of thyrotoxicosis or thyrostone is exogenous ingestion of levotyrosin, particularly in people that are truly on treatment for hypothyroidism. But some can actually do, do it deliberately. So, levotyrosine use for the treatment of hypothyroidism could be a differential diagnosis of hypothyroidism. And with that, I've come to the end of this presentation. And that will mark the end of the entire series when it comes to hypothyroidism. Thanks for listening to all my presentations. Please remember to share. Remember to subscribe. I appreciate it.